what we're going to do is take a look at how to solve uh, systems of equations, linear equations with two variables. And basically, uh, the solution to a system of equations is just the point where two lines intersect. All right, so if I had a system of equations, uh, which would be like 4x plus 3y equals 9, and x minus 2y equals 5, they intersect at 3, negative 1. So 3, negative 1 is the solution to that system of equations. And if you took 3, negative 1, 3 is your x value and negative 1 is your y value, and plugged them into both of these equations, uh, you would actually see that it works for both equations. You could also have a situation where you actually have no solutions, so your two lines are parallel and they have different y-intercepts. Uh, if that were the case, you would have no solutions, and if your two lines actually were the same and they lied on top of each other, you'd have an infinite number of solutions. What we're going to do is take a look at how to solve three different problems using three different methods. So for this first problem, we're going to use the uh, elimination or the addition method. And basically, we want to combine these two equations and eliminate one of the variables so we can solve for the one we did not eliminate. Now, if we're going to add these together, uh, if you take 4 and 2, you get 6. 3 and negative 5, you get negative 2. Those, none of those are get, getting eliminated. So what we're going to do is uh, we can multiply this entire equation by negative 2. And if we do it to both sides, we don't really change it. We're just going to change the way it looks. All right, so we're going to multiply everything by negative 2. So we get negative 4x plus 10y equals a positive 34. And I'm going to rewrite the top equation right below that. So we get 4x plus 3y equals 5. Now if I add these together, my x values are going to eliminate. Uh, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. A 10 plus 3 is a 13y and 34 plus 5 is 39. Now since I've eliminated x, I can solve this for y, just divide by 13, and you get y is equal to 3. All right, so that is the y value of where these two lines are going to cross. Now you can take this 3 and you can plug it in there or there in either equation and solve for x. I'm going to plug it into the top one. Like I said, you can do either one, it doesn't matter. Right, 3 times 3 is 9, so we get 4x is equal to 5 minus 9, which is negative 4, and divide by 4 and you get x is equal to negative 1. All right, so my solution is negative 1, 3. All right, and what you could do is you could check your work. Take negative 1, plug it in for your x value, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, take 3 and plug it in for your y value, you get 9, negative 4 plus 9 is definitely 5, so it checks there check it in your other equation as well, negative 2 minus 15 is negative 17, so it checks for both equations so you know you've done your work correctly. In this next example, we're going to use the substitution method in which we take one of the equations and we solve it for one of its variables, and then we, what it was equal to, we take that and plug it into the other equation. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this top equation here, x minus 3y equals 2, and we're going to solve that for x. So I get x is equal to, I'm going to add 3y to both sides, 2 plus 3y. Now, since x is equal to 2 plus 3y, these are the same exact thing. All right? In this second equation, if x is equal to 2 plus 3y, what I can do is take 2 plus 3y and replace my x value. So I'm going to have 2, since it was times x, I have 2 times this entire thing. And now we can simplify this and solve it for y. So I'll distribute, you get 4 plus 6y minus 5y equals 2. This is going to be a 1y, and if I subtract 4 from both sides, I get a negative 2. So my y value is negative 2. Once you have this solved, the rest is fairly simple. Just plug it back into your modified equation, and you get x is equal to 2 plus 3 times negative 2, and so x is equal to 2 minus 6, and you get x is equal to negative 4. So we have negative 4 and negative 2. My solution is negative 4 and negative 2. And once again, that's the ordered pair where these two lines would cross if you were to graph them. The final method I'm going to show you is called Kramer's Rule, and it's going to involve matrices and determinants. And uh, I'll explain this as I set it up, but basically, uh, set up your x and set up your y value. And what we're going to do is our denominators, these bars mean I'm going to take the de determinant of whatever is in these bars. Uh, 
inside of these, we're going to put our x and y coefficients. So I have 2, negative 1, and 3, and 5. And for the y values, I'm going to do the same exact thing. On the top, in the numerator, it's going to be a little bit different. Since I'm solving for x, I'm going to replace the x values with the 6 and 22. The y values are going to stay the same, negative 1 and 5. And over here, since I'm solving for y, my x values are going to stay the same, and my y values are going to be replaced by 6 and 22. Right. From here, you've got to find the determinant of the numerator and the denominator, and then divide the two. The way you find the determinant, you multiply the top left number with the bottom right number, and then subtract that from the other cross product. So 6 times 5 is 30, and we're going to subtract that from uh, negative 1 times 22, which is negative 22. On the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. Remember, top left to bottom right, 10 minus, and that's a negative 3. And then here we get, that's going to be a 30 plus 22, which is a 52, divided by 13. 52 divided by 13 is 4, so I know x is 4. And for the y values, 2 times 22 is 44 minus 18 over 10 minus negative 3. So 44 minus 18 is 26. And that's going to be plus, so it's going to be 13. My y value is equal to 2. And you would write that as an ordered pair. 4, 2. All right. And you could have used e any of the methods for either of these. They're all interchangeable, but some are just easier than others.